Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Fields here. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. All this month, we have been enjoying our regional apostle of Region 3, Apostle Fred Rubin, as he has taught on leadership. And certainly, we thank God for each installment, each week, all that he has had to say. This is the last installment on his series on leadership. And Apostle Rubin, we want you to know that we love you so much. We'll talk a little bit more about that after the lesson. But I'm grateful to the Lord uh, for the opportunity that we have for this fellowship uh, and for how you have been blessing the region. And Greater Refuge Temple here in DC, Jeremiah Temple as well. We want to thank God for you. I'm going to step out of the way so our apostle can come in and teach once again on leadership. The Lord bless you. Let's enjoy the class together. God bless. He is the Lord, everybody. Pastor Reuben. Yes, as we honor the Lord. Yes, thank you, Apostle Fields, for allowing us once again to interact with your wonderful congregation in D.C. and those in Baltimore and others that may be watching. And I've been learning the law of navigation. Uh, I'm doing this a little different than I normally do in my sharing, but you all remember the law of navigation? When things change, you have to adjust. You have to adjust. So I'm trying to learn how to adjust. I'm trying to learn how to do it the best possible way. But yes, we're teaching the principles of leadership. And we've been using not only this book, but a number of handouts. This is 21 Irref Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John C. Maxwell. And I have some handouts. Um, one I'm going to share with you tonight putting together as a packet for those that would like to get the handouts. And we're going to look at three more laws from uh, John C. Maxwell's book. Now, I have a little bit of a cold. If I grab my water and take a little sip, that'll be okay, won't it? I'm going to pray I don't have to take too many sips, but we're going to look for the Lord because I want you I want you to know and to receive and to put into practice the principles of leadership, these 21 laws. Now remember, you discover them. You don't, you don't invent them. You don't create them. They're there. And we have to understand them and use them that we might be effective in our leadership. Leadership's what? Influence. That's right. You know the levels of influence. If not, um, you better email me and I'll give you those five levels of influence. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Father, I thank you today for the privilege. Yes, it's a joy. It's a privilege to be able to come before thee and before your sons and your daughters. Be with us as we seek to share under your anointing that you might be glorified, and that your sons and daughters might be edified in Jesus' name. We pray this day, amen, amen, and amen. Just real quick, 21 laws. The laws can be learned. The laws can stand alone. The laws carry consequences with them. The laws are the foundation of leadership. Everything. Everything. Everything, everything rises and falls on leadership. Well, I mentioned some handouts. I'm looking at something that's very, very impressive to me. Michael Hyatt wrote this. That's Michael Hyatt. And uh, I'm going to take time to, to read. It tells me it'll take me three and a half minutes to read it. Maybe I'll read a little bit faster than that. So much of the activity I see among leaders today is focused on reaching the masses. This is Michael Hyatt speaking. Successful leaders speak at big conferences, host popular 
television or radio shows, publish bus best-selling books, write successful blogs, or engage in social media. Simply put, their goal is breath. How many people can I reach? They want to extend their influence to as many people as possible. 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Television, radio, multitude of people. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus had a much different. Now, that's important. That's a clue. We need to listen, right? Jesus had a much different leadership strategy. Strategy. That's not where he started. His goal. Talking about Jesus now. No, I'm not going to do it in three and a half minutes. I want to highlight some points to you. His goal was not reach or popularity. In fact, as strange as it sounds, today he actively discouraged publicity. On more than one occasion, after performing a jaw-dropping miracle, he told those who witnessed it, tell nobody, tell no one what you have seen. You go to Matthew 8, chapter 4, that's one place. He was a publicist's nightmare. Don't tell anybody. I know you saw a miracle. Don't tell anybody. Well, what did Jesus focus on? True depth and long-term impact. To achieve this, he had a five-pronged leadership strategy. I know this is going to be in the handouts that I make available. Number one, he led himself. That's where leadership starts. Self-leadership precedes team leadership and public influence. If you can't lead yourself, you can't and should not lead others. In the handout, there's going to be some scriptures that you'll be able to look at. Number two, he confided in the three. Yes, he had an inner circle. I talked that last week, inner circle. Peter, James, and John. He brought them very close to him, confided in them. He was preparing them for leadership and preparing them to play a special role. Let himself confide in the three, and he trained the 12. Now the numbers are getting bigger, right? One, three, now we're at 12. He prayerfully, remember we talked about that last week. He prayed all night, called 70, chose 12. Train the 12. Started by demonstrating, then gave them assignments, brought them back, discussed with them what they were doing, corrected when necessary. He also mobilized, mobilized the 70. That's right. One, three, 12. Yes, he dealt with the 70. And he also taught the multitude. Now, again, he wanted debt and long-term change. Not just the masses, but those that he dealt with. And they were going to carry the message. They were going to carry the message. Yes, he knew one was an insignificant number to achieve greatness. Let himself, confided in three, train the twelve, interacted with the assembly, and taught the multitude. That's what true leadership is about. Not just trying to make a name for yourself. Not just trying to be famous or get rich. But trying to impact people's lives. Can we digest that for a little bit? As a leader, you want to impact in a positive manner through depth and long-term change in people's lives. But that's why you got to change yourself first. That's, that's right. That's why first you have to have change within yourself. If you can't lead yourself, you ought not to be leading other people. Often ask the question, if people follow you, where are they going to wind up? That's a tough one, isn't it? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right, 
Now, again, I'll remind you, if you have a question, and some did last week, uh, you can put it right there on Facebook. You can email me. And if you email me, I can give you more of an in-depth answer. Right there on Facebook, it'll probably be a shorter answer. Fred Rubin 1 at Verizon.net. All right, let's start with the law of diet. One of the things that I always mention when I talk about the law of buy-in, nobody waxes a rental car. You rent a car, it's not yours. You might sweep it out. You might, if you have it for a long time, take it right through the car wash, but you're not going to wax it. You'll give some care to it, but you're not going to wax it. What am I talking about? Folks have to buy in to what it is that you want to accomplish, what it is, the vision, what it is. But there's some things that we need to understand. People buy into the leader than the vision. There must be trust. There must be confidence. There must be buy-in. The law of connection, all these law of addition, all these are laws. As you function and people trust you, they recognize that you have their interest, your heart. Before you ask for their hand, they know they have your heart. They buy in first to the leader, then to the vision. And then we can throw into the mix to the size of the vision as well. People do not at first follow worthy causes. They follow worthy leaders who promote causes they can believe in. When we talked about the levels of leadership, remember what that top one was, personhood? Someone that has poured into other folks' lives. Someone who has encouraged other folks. Someone who has Bless other folks. People buy into that person. And when they share their vision, when they share their cause, when they share what they have to offer, people, they, they're not rushing to buy into the cause first, but they follow the worthy leader. And then as they promote those causes, they're going to follow I'm hoping I'm making this thing clear. As a leader, you have to prove yourself to be a worthy leader. You have to have connected with people, added value to their lives, produced, helped them fulfill their dreams. Then you're going to be able to cast that vision. The person who they don't trust, that doesn't matter what the vision is. I don't want to hear what you got to say. But as they trust, as they trust, as they trust, as you're seen as a worthy leader, then they're going to follow. Every message that people receive is filtered through the messenger that delivers it. I'm thinking about the filters that we have at home for water. The filter cleanses that water. The filter prepares that water. If a person trusts you, your, that message they hear is being filtered through you. They buy into you. They're going to hear what you got to say. Maybe I, I should say it this way, very simplistic. You are the message. That's right. People are looking at you. You. Why don't you tap yourself? I'm the message. If they don't trust me, it doesn't matter what I say. People want to go along with people to get along with. That's right. People follow people that they trust. People follow people who they get along with. 
Let me give you some possibilities here. If they don't buy into the leader or vision, they're going to get another leader. If they don't buy into the person who's delivering and they don't like the vision, we, we need a new leader. If they don't buy into the leader but the vision, they're still going to get another leader. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, they like the vision but don't like the leader. They're still getting another leader. Buy in the leader, but don't buy in the vision. Give us another vision. But at least the folks haven't left. What needs to happen, buy in the leader, buy in the vision, and they're going to get behind the leader and the vision. That's what we need to get to. You need to, now, that's why we're teaching these principles. You might be a wonderful person, mean, all good. Might have some talent. But if you don't practice the laws of leadership, you ignore them. You know what you're doing? You're making believe the law of gravity doesn't work. You're, you're, you're making believe somehow if I drop this pen, it's not going to fall. It's going to fall. And I don't care who you are, where you're at, what you look like, how long you've been dropping pens going to fall. So it starts with being a worthy, worthy leader and asking God for the right vision. As a leader, your success is measured by your ability to actually take people where they need to go. We better talk about that. Where they need to go. As a pastor, there's some things I, I know I need to lead the folks to be praying people, word people. Maybe before that I ought to say holy people, godly people. But if I don't present myself as a worthy leader, if I don't utilize the laws, now I'm going to tell you a secret. Tell you what, I'll tell you a secret. You can only tell a thousand people. After that, you can't tell anybody. I'm trying to grow. I, I'm, I talked about the law of navigation, even how to sit here and look like uh, my clothes are properly uh, tired and not wrinkled. And I looked at some of my things and I said, well, why did it look like that? But more than that, as a leader, as a leader, Yes, that other stuff. But more than that, as a leader, I'm trying to grow. No, once you stop wanting to grow, you're in trouble. Why do I want to grow? Because I want to be able to lead the people where they need to go. A godly life, a holy life, a committed life, a life of integrity, a life of caring. So I've got to lead myself so I can lead them. You can only do that if the people first buy into you. Now, I'm blessed. We have some folks that, that they trust me because I've proved myself trustworthy. But I want to keep growing. I want to keep growing so when God gives me a vision... Now, I'm saying this about me. I pray that you want to keep growing. Come to a place that you can lead people to the place that they're supposed to go. They need to go. I want to get them to the secret place of the Most High. I want to get them, get them to a place of faith and trust. Where does it start? By me being a worthy leader. Let me suggest some questions you can ask of yourself. 
Do you have a vision? Those of you in leadership position. Do you have a vision for your leadership and organization? Or are you just going through the motions? When we talk about community refuge, a vision that it's a place where God's love prevails, a place where prayers are prayed, and this is important, based on those other two, a place where lives are changed. Yes, our vision is that people can come from wherever, and through the love and through the prayers, God's grace, lives will be change. Now to get that, I have to lead them to where they need to go. So do you have a vision? Next question is a challenging one. What is the level of buy-in for the people that you lead? Are people trusting you? Do you have buy-in? If you don't have it at the level you want, you've got to keep working at becoming a better leader. Lead yourself. And no matter how close you get to where you want to go, keep going. Because the process never stops. The process never stops. All right, let me give you some ways you can earn credibility with those you seek to lead. Here's some hints. Be in our handouts. Develop a good relationship with them. Show love, show caring. Show them that they have your heart, that you want to add value to their lives, that you're connected to them. Yes, you've heard those in the other laws. That's where it's from. Be honest and authentic and develop trust through your honesty. Well, I'm, I'm telling you I need to grow. I'm trying to be honest. I'm telling you I have to practice a law of navigation. Endeavoring to be honest. Not where I want to go yet, but I'm on my way. Paul said, I press toward the mark. I'm not there yet, Paul said, but I'm pressing. And I'm challenging you through these lessons to press, to press, to press, to keep on pressing. You know, I, I can share some things. I can preach a little, some things and share. I can teach a little bit and share. But I'm not where I want to be yet. And you say, well, you've been around a while. That doesn't matter. I still got strength, praise the Lord. I'm, uh, when you stop wanting to grow, you go backwards. Remember when you were in the third grade? Can you remember that far back? And they taught you, if you're walking two miles an hour and there's a wind behind you going two miles an hour from your back front, you're going to wind up going four miles. But if it's a headwind and you're walking two inches going against you one, you're only going to wind up going one. You want to keep going. There's a force that wants to stop you. But you want to keep growing, you want to keep developing. By holding yourself to the high standards and setting a good example. Live holy, live godly. And when it comes to these laws, practice them. Give those that are following you the tools to do their job better. You know, I'm shaking my head. We, we just spent a lot of money this week, uh, last couple weeks. Our sound man, our video man, another supporter. Bishop, we put in these new lights, and uh, the screen we have, people can't really see what we're posting. We need to bring in a large TV screen. Well, we did. That was the tools they wanted. And, of course, they needed other things to go along with it. And then he, he want to be able to film our service as well. He, I need a second camera. The technicians. Now, when it comes to teaching and preaching, those kinds of things, workshops, books, 
Give people the tools so they can do their job better. Don't strip them and expect them to do better. Give them the tools they need. Invest in them. Yes, number five, help them to achieve their personal goals. Not just things that are going to help you, but their personal goals. Remember that's that fourth step, personnel development. And by developing them as leaders. It's good to sit. Talk about what's occurring. Share the laws. Discuss the laws. Help them to understand what's going on. Now the last one, develop a strategy with each person. Yes, sit and chat with that person. Uh, I was told that this is a good concept. Where do you want to be? What's your dream for five years down the road? What's your dream? Then develop a strategy. How that person can have that dream fulfilled. And if it needs adjustment, amending, that's part of the discussion. But help folks meet their dreams. All right? What law is that? Anybody remember what the law is? The law of buy-in. People buy in first to the leader and then to the vision. If they don't buy into the leader, even if they buy into the vision, they want another leader. Now they buy into the leader. Vision not quite, they'll, they'll help you get a new vision. But you want to come to the place, they buy into the worthy leader. The Lord give you the vision. You know how to share it, cast it. And they will follow you. They will follow you. They will follow you. Let's look at the next law. Again, questions, comments, please, please ask me on Facebook or better yet, email me to get a more detailed answer. The law of the big picture. I often use this term when I talk about this. The goal is more important than the role. Health, your health, physical health. You got a liver, you got a gallbladder, praise the Lord. All these things, part of the body. Saints are part of the body. Our concern is not becoming famous or rich, but helping accomplish the goal. What's the goal? Souls being added to the kingdom. Souls being strengthened. Souls being blessed. And you need to know your role. Sometimes you have to step out of that role, help someone else. Because the goal is more important than the role. Well, let me, let me go through some stuff to help clarify that, okay? Great leaders. Talk about you. Great leaders always seem to embody two seemingly disparate qualities. They're both highly visionary and highly practical. Highly visionary and highly practical. Practical. The Lord shows them a vision. But they're also very practical. Yes, I think I told you one of the earlier weeks, I'm not playing in the NBA. I don't care how much faith I got. I don't care what kind of great vision I might have. I'm not going to play in the NBA. I talk about it this way. There's a thin line between faith and foolishness, and we'll get back to that later. The leader's effective modeling of the vision makes a picture come alive. Can you draw a mental picture? Can you help people see the 
vision that God has shown you. Oh, it's when a person has that kind of ability to draw a mental picture. Well, you got to see it first yourself. Got to understand it first yourself. Then be able to, to draw it, paint it out there. Help folks connect. Because you want them to see the big picture. Not just one little part. Now the little parts come together to make the whole. But you got to see the whole. If not, little parts be going all over the place. Keystone Cops, you don't remember that, do you? Google it, Keystone Cops. All right, now, to help them, followers, you need to understand this, followers are always watching what you are doing. I encourage all of our saints to be at 9.30 prayer on Sunday morning. It's a prayer before we get ready for education hour, morning worship. I just can't tell them. I've got to be in that prayer. They're watching. I, I want them to follow me as I follow Christ. So if you're going to lead, lead. Don't instruct, lead. What am I talking about? Just don't tell people what to do. Lead them. Lead them, lead them, lead them in what needs to be done. And I know sometimes it's more difficult to do than to teach, but folks are watching you. Want to see the big picture? Lead them. Followers may doubt what the leaders say, but they usually believe what they do. That's a two-edged sword. It's a double-sided coin. If you're doing the right thing, and yes, it's, again, it's easier to teach what is right than to do what is right. But if you're doing the right thing, you're building trust. People have to follow you. If you're saying one thing, doing another, you don't want to follow somebody like that, do you? Leaders tell, well, listen to this. I, I, I like this statement here. Praise the Lord. I'm not taking credit for it, but I really enjoy it. Leaders tell, but never teach until they practice what they preach. I, I want to sit here again. I, I want to hear it. Leaders tell, but never teach until they practice what they preach. That's a strong statement. People are watching you. And they're going to make decisions not on what you tell them, but what you do. Well, number one is a good statement. Not number one, the next one. We should work on changing ourselves before trying to improve others. All right, I'm going to throw this out there. I keep saying I'm going to lose that 10 pounds I'm going to lose. Well, I can't tell anybody else how to lose it. I can tell them, but that's not going to be effective leadership. But if I do what I'm supposed to do, then I can not just tell, but I'm teaching and I'm practicing what I preach. As a leader... The first person that I need to lead is me. Remember what we said in the buy-in? Jesus, you lead yourself. Jesus dealt with himself, dealt with himself, dealt with himself. Then the three, then the twelve, then the seven, then the multitudes. I want to give your followers a, a valuable gift. Not talking about money, not talking about something that you can touch. The most valuable gift, the most valuable gift, see I'm trying to get this collar right. The most valuable gift a leader can give is being a good example. Everybody saying amen to that? 
The most valuable gift the leader can give is being a good example. More than anything, followers want leaders whose beliefs and actions lined up. I believe this, but I'm doing this. I believe this and I'm doing this, folks are going to follow. They want good models who lead from the front. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. I often ask this question, I might have said it before. If somebody follows you, where are they going to wind up? Make sure you're going in the right direction. Then you're not only telling, you can teach because you're doing what you say. You're not just preaching, but you're doing what you preach. More than anything else, leaders should welcome being accountable. Nothing builds confidence in a leader more than a willingness to take responsibility for what happens during his watch. One might add that nothing builds a stronger case for holding followers to a higher standard than a leader who holds himself to even a higher one. True everywhere. If I'm going to push prayer, I've got to be a prayer warrior. Not just at 9.30, but I need to be a prayer warrior. Oh, hallelujah. The law of the big picture. It starts with leading oneself. Seeing the big picture. The goal is more important than the role. All right. Let's go to another law. We've got one more law to look at this evening. You know, this is the fourth Wednesday. I'm, I'm feeling the most comfortable right now. Takes a while. Takes a while. Law of navigation. I'm feeling more comfortable than what I'm doing. This is the, the last law, and I chose it to be the last one because it talks about that price. Remember, I, I read on, on two occasions the price of leadership. This law is entitled the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice. Why do people, let's start with that. Why do people want to lead? Some want to make money, get rich. Some want to build an organization, a business. Some want to bring change either to the organization some want to bring change to the whole world. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Praise the Lord. Next week, we'll acknowledge when he was assassinated. I was in basic training in Fort Dix, New Jersey, when the word came out. He was shot and killed. Memphis, assassinated. I remember, praise the Lord, I remember that, hearing that message. But let's talk a little bit about Dr. King as it relates to the law of sacrifice. As a young man, it was apparent he was a leader. When you read about his gifts and talents, uh, he graduated college, I believe he was at 19. President of his class, he, he was a leader. Then went on, and he was taking different courses. He was obviously got his master's, his doctorate, but he took a course that greatly impacted the rest of his life, the teachings of Gandhi. His study of Gandhi brought him to a place. He, he connected. Well, Gandhi was quite a leader. He connected to bringing change to non-violence. He wasn't trying to get rich, wasn't trying to get famous. 
He was in the forefront for the battle of justice. Not just for those of color, but for all mankind. The law of sacrifice demonstrated in the life of Dr. King. It wasn't for position, perks, or power. It was for social justice for all. This drive demanded great sacrifice. Sacrifice is the heart of leadership. Yes, we have talked about the price of leadership. It takes a sacrifice. I'll make a statement. There's no success without sacrifice. You're not going anywhere without sacrifice. There's no success without sacrifice. Any person who has achieved any success in life has made sacrifices. Folks go to college four, five, six years, even more, and make a sacrifice. Athletes, you might say, well, they're just natural. Well, I don't know about that. But they spend hours in the gym, on the court, hours on the field, hours, because they want to be successful. Parents make sacrifices to bless their children to become mature and, and well-meaning adults. Success calls for sacrifice. Now here, here's something that's important when you consider sacrifice. I have this in bold. I want you to hear this. For everything you have missed, you have gained something else. And everything you gain, you lose something. If I want to be a successful teacher, I've got to pour myself into becoming a successful teacher. And that takes time. It takes effort. Which means when I say yes to that, I'm saying no to everything else. You can't do A and B at the same time. If I'm gaining because of A, I'm letting B go. I was taught this. Do what you need to do first. And then once that's done, you can do what you might want to do. Life is a series of trades, one thing for another. Leaders, I'm talking to leaders, potential leaders and current leaders. Leaders must give up to go up. Praise the Lord. There was times this week I wanted to relax, time this week I wanted to do this, time this week. But I needed to prepare. So I had to give up stuff to prepare myself to share with you today what I'm sharing. Effective leaders sacrifice much. If you take notes, underline much, bold much, circle much. Sacrifice much that is good in order to dedicate themselves to what is best. Good's the enemy of excellence. Don't settle with good. It's going to cost you a sacrifice. But if you want to be the best, you want to be at that level, you're going to have to make sacrifices. Leaders, some of you say, I'm not going to be a leader. Leaders are often asked to give up more than others. Now, I looked at that statement, are often, because we have some followers here at Community Refuge, and they make some I'll tell you, sacrifices. They're not in a leadership position, but they're sacrificing because they want the best. They want the best. They want the best. Now, as a leader, the heart of leadership is putting others ahead of yourself. It's doing what is best for the team.
team. Goal is more important than the role. For that reason, I believe that leaders have to give up their rights. A gentleman by the name of Gerald Brooks, he was a leader, a pastor, made this statement. When you become a leader, you lose the right to think about yourself. How is this going to impact the whole? I'm more concerned about the goal than my role, the big picture. Now, as you're making sacrifices, you're progressing. Not time to stop. You're going to have to keep sacrificing. And once you get to a certain level, it's going to cost you to stay there. It's going to cost you even more to go higher. That's what you want. And don't forget, when you stop pushing forward, you're going backwards. As you rise in leadership, responsibilities increase and rights decrease. You know, on a national level, I do serve as an apostle, serve with some wonderful people, and there's some wonderful bishops and some wonderful presbyters. Uh, but I'm talking about those that, that just want a title. They don't realize the sacrifices, if they're going to really be good at what they do, the sacrifices, the sacrifice. When we went through the cost, the emotional, the financial, the loneliness you have to accept. A whole lot of times I just want to be with Lady Ruben. I can't be. I've got to do what I have to do. Children were coming up. I want to be with them. I have to wait till later to do that. Some things I have to do. As you rise in leadership, responsibility increase and rights decrease. The sacrifice may differ, but the cost remains. A couple other facts before we start wrapping up for this evening. Always remember that you're standing on another shoulder, someone else's shoulder. Folks that came before you, folks that laid the foundation, you're building on them, you're building on them. And don't forget that reality. And others are going to build on you. Your sacrifices are going to bless those. As you benefit from the sacrifices of others, others will benefit by the sacrifices you're making. I'm going to ask you a couple questions to bring this to an end, I think. What are you willing to give up? You want to be successful? What are you willing to give up? And the other part of that question is, what are you not willing to give up? And there should be some things that you're not. I'm not willing to give up my marriage. I'm not willing to give up my children. I'm not willing to give up those things that God gave me I'm supposed to hold on to. Now, I'm going to have to give up some of that time. So let me ask you. I want you to give it some thought. What are you willing to give up? What are you not willing to give up? If you're not willing to give up anything, you're not going to make any sacrifices, you're not going anywhere as a leader. But there's some things you're not supposed to give up. Don't, don't lose your family. Don't lose your financial stability. I'll let you give that some thought. Want to talk about it more? Email me. Heart of leadership is sacrifice. Sacrifice is an ongoing process. If leaders have to give up to go up, then they have to give up even more to stay up. I looked at three laws with you tonight, and I looked at that article. Yes, very important article that talked about 
the type of leadership that Jesus had. He wasn't into numbers. At times he told folks, don't tell anybody what you saw. But he wanted the depth and the long-term change that comes into folks' lives. And I challenge you to really take a good look at what you want to accomplish, why you want to be a leader. Now, a good leader, a worthy leader, takes people to the place where they need to go. They value others more than themselves. They'll make sacrifice. Yes, that's a key law. That's why I'm looking at it last, because you have to make sacrifice. People are going to connect to you. When we talk about the law of buying, they connect first to the leader, then to the vision. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. But the gain that comes from making the sacrifices that God has for you to make, by making those sacrifices that God would have you to make, when you can see lives changed through your prayers, through your example, through your sharing, to watch lives change. Yes, to see folks that didn't know much about God, but because of your sacrifice, they not only know he's God, but they have a, a building, ongoing building relationship with him. We're going to pray. This is our fourth night. Maybe we'll be able to come back again. and we, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Apostle Fields might say this man need to navigate some more first. I don't know. I am looking if the Lord would tarry be in D.C. for a greater refuge for a preaching service, a Sunday morning service, third Sunday. I'm going to have my handouts put together. But I'm enjoying the privilege. I want to get better at it. I told you. I want to improve my preaching, my teaching, and certainly my leadership skills. How about you? Now you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to give up to go up. Let's pray. Gracious Father, what a joy it is to say thank you. A joy to, to lift our voice and to honor you and to bless you. We thank God for Apostle Fields and the church. Lord, we thank God for the principles of leadership that you show us that we might function in a way that we can bless others. Let the power and the move of God be upon your children. God us, direct us in ways that go beyond understanding. And surely we'll continue to praise you. Bless that man, that woman that needs your touch. Open the doors to, to salvation for those that need it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Apostle Fields, he, he, he did tell me to say what I'm going to say now, but I'm going to encourage you to invest in that work in D.C. In fact, he might not want me to say it, but I'm going to encourage you to invest in the Greater Refuge Temple Ministry. You're talking about a man that's making sacrifices, pouring himself into the work, work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. I'm sure when you click on certain things, there's a way that you can invest in the ministry. And I suggest that you do it. In the meantime, keep us in prayer because we're growing now. We're growing. We're growing. Let's grow together. Love you. Appreciate you. Questions, comments, email me. I certainly want to hand out, so let me know. Let me say it one more time. Thank you, Apostle Fields. We love you. We appreciate you. And all of these wonderful folks that you're shepherding. God bless. God bless. God bless. Well, thank you, Apostle Ruben, for all that you have taught us this month. 
we thank God for you again, as we forestated, and we appreciate your wonderful leadership, you uh, and Lady Reuben. Bless you. Now, um, as we said, we thank God for you and Greater Refuge Temple as we prepare for Resurrection Sunday. Uh, let's meet on Friday, Good Friday, 7.30, uh, seven sayings, seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross. Seven o'clock will be on the altar, 7.30, praise and worship will begin. And of course, Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, let's be on time. I know the Lord is going to bless us both Friday and Saturday. And remember, I'm on the altar I'm on the altar tomorrow, Thursday, from 10 until 2. And again on Good Friday, from 10 until 2, laying out on the altar, trusting God. Our God is a miracle worker. Praying for those families in the Baltimore area and all of those who are affected by the collapse of the bridge there in Baltimore and those who are still counted as missing and those families who know for surety they have suffered the loss, we want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, strength and comfort we ask for all those who have been affected by this tragedy, this tragic event. We need you, Lord. Help us through this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. And of course, you know what to do if you want to plant seed in this ministry. Technician, again, will put that on the bottom of the screen. Those of you at Jeremiah Temple, hold your seed until tomorrow evening. Those of you at Refuge Temple Annex, you may use Givelify. Until next week, and you know we'll be continuing our series on the Song of Songs, the Book of Solomon. We had two more lessons to go. So we're doing lesson nine next week and the following week will be lesson 10. And all of you who are traveling to the Youth Congress and the Leadership Seminar, Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday. Until next week, be prayerful, be careful, and be holy. Shalom, shalom.